O oh, sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders in the sight of the nations. He has shown his deliverance. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on the fifth Sunday of Easter. Coming together as God's family with confidence, let us ask the Father's forgiveness, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul got to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. They could not believe that he was really a disciple. Barnabas, however, took charge of him, introduced him to the apostles, and explained how the Lord had appeared to Saul and spoken to him on his journey, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Saul now started to go around with them in Jerusalem, preaching fearlessly in the name of the Lord. But after he had spoken to the Hellenists and argued with them, they became determined to kill him. When the brothers knew, they took him to Caesarea and sent him off from there to Tarsus. The churches throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria were now left in peace, building themselves up, living in the fear of the Lord and filled with the consolation of the Holy Spirit. The Word of the Lord. My vows I will pay before those who fear me. The poor shall eat and shall have their fill. They shall praise the Lord, those who seek him. May their hearts live forever and ever. All the earth shall remember and return to the Lord. All families of the nations worship before him. They shall worship him, all the mighty of the earth. Before him shall bow down all who go to the dust. And my soul shall live for him, my children serve him. They shall tell of the Lord to generations yet to come, declare his faithfulness to peoples yet unborn. These things the Lord has done. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, our love is not just to be words or mere talk, but something real and active. Only by this can we be certain that we are children of the truth and be able to quieten our conscience in his presence. 
whatever accusations it may raise against us, because God is greater than our conscience and he knows everything. My dear people, if we cannot be condemned by our own conscience, we need not be afraid in God's presence. And whatever we ask him we shall receive, because we keep his commandments and live the kind of life that he wants. His commandments are these, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and that we love one another as he has told us to. Whoever keeps his commandments lives in God and God lives in him. We know that he lives in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Make your home in me as I make mine in you. Whoever remains in me bears fruit in plenty. Alleluia. Cleanse my heart and my lips, O God that I may worthily proclaim your gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that bears no fruit he cuts away and every branch that does bear fruit he prunes to make it bear even more. You are pruned already by means of the word that I have spoken to you. Make your home in me as I make mine in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit all by itself but must remain part of the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me with me in him bears fruit in plenty, for cut off from me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is like a branch that has been thrown away. He withers. These branches are collected and thrown on the fire and they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for what you will and you shall get it. It is to the glory of my Father that you should bear much fruit and then you will be my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Three young people were discussing some recent translations of the Bible. One said, I like the American version the best. It is so much clearer than the other versions and is so much easier to read. The second said, I like the Jerusalem Bible. It is not only clearer, but it is more poetic and better laid out. The third said, I like my mother's translation the best of all. She translates the Bible into prayer and acts of love, which makes such a difference to our lives. Now we just heard today in the second reading, as St. John said, Love is not just to be words or mere talk, but something real and active. Like I said a couple of Sundays ago, the Bible is not a bedtime storybook, but it's a plan of action. Actions, as we know, speak louder than words. You'll never learn to ride a bike without falling off it a few times. A song is not a song until you sing it. Love is not love until you give it away. Last Sunday, if you remember, Jesus, comparing himself to the good shepherd, he said, I know my own sheep and my own know me. But we have to work at deepening our relationship with Jesus. Just building up a friendship and relationship with anybody takes time and effort. Spiritual fruits are not produced just with a wave of the hand. Now at our baptism, and the reading today is about the vine and the branches being grafted onto the vine. So at our baptism, we've been grafted onto the main vine, which is Jesus Christ. And at our confirmation, that union is strengthened. Just like the branches draw their life from the vine, 
We draw our spiritual strength from Jesus so that the fruits of this union will be evident in our lives for all to see. This happens, I think, especially at Mass. In John's Gospel, Jesus says, Whoever receives me in Holy Communion will draw life from me. It's like the baby in the womb drawing life from its mother, a life which continues to be nurtured by the parents, by their love and attention for many years after the baby is born. So it's like the baby in the womb drawing life from the mother, so we too draw life from Jesus. But this love of Jesus will eventually come to fruition and I think it must be a great joy to a mother and a father when their children begin to respond to their love in simple and spontaneous ways. The same applies to our relationship with Jesus. What joy it brings to the heart of Jesus when we love him for his own sake in good times and in bad and not merely for what we can get from him in the line of favours. In last Sunday's Gospel Jesus said, The Father loves me because I lay down my life. Now I know God loves everyone but when we lay down our lives for each other in simple and varied ways, he's especially fond of us because we follow closely in his son's footsteps. Today, Jesus talks about a branch being pruned to make it bear even more fruit. If a little suffering or inconvenience comes our way, it might just be the little love test from our Lord. It is not very difficult to love those who love us, but by loving those who stretch our patience, real and lasting fruit is indeed produced. If you remember last Sunday we spoke about the shortage of vocations. However, I believe, and I did say it last Sunday, that the real crisis in the world is a drought of love which is quenched only by the Holy Spirit pouring love into our hearts as we are united with the vine. It can only be sustained, however, by us remaining part of the vine, which is Jesus himself. Cut off from him, from him we can do precious little. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, and through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice has made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that we may have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before him. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land Every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment or condemnation but through your loving mercy be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
I am the true vine, and you are the branches, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me, and I in him, bears fruit in plenty. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has ended, go in peace. Thanks be to God. <laughs>